Hi, Professor Awadala. This is Marcia Sandholz, Bio 165I5. Um, I'm very, very sick, and I can't speak very well, and my nose is running, and I'm sweaty, so uh, this might be interesting. But I wanted to name the bones of the skull. Here's my list with the bones that I'll be naming. Uh, forget the phone number. I didn't have a piece of paper a moment ago when someone called. And here's my uh, skull. Uh, the front bone is called the frontal bone. That's the forehead and the top of the head. We have the parietal bone. There's two, the left and the right. Uh, the temporal bone, there's one on the left and the right also. And in the back is the occipital bone. The sutures that hold these together is uh, the coronal suture joins the frontal with the two parietal. The sagittal suture joins the two parietal. The squamous suture joins the temporal with the parietal, and the lambdoid suture um, joins the occipital to the two parietal. On the face, we have the nasal bone, the maxilla, which is the upper jaw, and the mandible, which is the lower jaw. On the mandible, there are two small holes called the mental foramen, and this is the point where the mental nerve and uh, blood vessels exit to um, provide for the skin of the chin. On the side, this larger piece of the mandible is called the mandibular ramus, and uh, these two projections here are called the mandibular condyle, and that is the point of attachment for the muscles that allow us to move our jaw. Ta on uh, the back here, we have the mastoid process, this large projection here, which is the point of attachment for muscles that allow us to move our head. And uh, right here, uh, anterior to that, we have a, a sharper uh, projection, and that's called the styloid process, and that's the point of attachment for the muscles for the tongue, uh, the throat, and the, um, one of the hyoid bones. Uh, on the front, we have the glabella, which is between the two supraorbital margins. Uh, we have two holes here, one here and one here. These are called the supraorbital foramen, which also allow for exit of the uh, uh, nerve and blood vessels to the forehead skin. And also at the bottom, we have um, infraorbital foramen. Uh, same thing, it provides um, nerve uh, and blood uh, flow to the skin of the face. Uh, on the underneath side, we have, um, oh, I forgot, I did this before and I forgot this, the zygomatic bones, which are the cheekbones here. And then underneath, we have the um, palatine bone, which is the roof of the mouth. You can also see it right there. Okay, the large hole is the foramen magnum, and that is the um, point of entry for the uh, spine and um, also for the spinal cord and for blood vessels and uh, the skeletal arteries. Um, when we open up the skull, we see uh, the sphenoid bone, which actually spans the width of the skull. Um, there's a greater wing and a lesser wing. And um, the greater wing actually shows on the outside of the skull, on the left and the right. And the greater wing is this section down here, goes all the way across. And the lesser wing is up here on top. In the greater wing of the sphenoid, there's a, a deep depression there called the uh, cella turcica, and that is where the pituitary gland is housed. Uh, anterior, the anterior part of the skull, there's a, um, a ridge-like projection there that's called the crystagalli, and that is the um, point where um, a membrane of the brain called the dura mat, or one of the meninges, attaches to the brain. And uh, I'll look at my list very quickly. I believe I've named them all. And thank you very much, and happy Halloween. It's